Hi guys, welcome to another video by Optionables. My name is Saket and today in this video we are going to cover about option grades. So this is the first part of the video and the introductory part. So we are going to cover basics of option grades. So this video is going to have two major things. One we are going to understand the fundamental concept of options. And later we are going to see how probability is going to affect the pricing of the option. So those are the two important things which we are going to see. And obviously we are also going to learn about different creeks and what they actually indicate. So before starting off, I want to tell you what are option creeks. For example, are this really important for you to do the trading? Many of us here know to drive a car, but how many of us actually know how an engine works, how a braking system works, only few of us, right? So we really don't know how these things, not all of us know how really these things work. So the entire idea of Greeks is something similar. So without knowing how these things work, you can still drive a car. Similarly, without knowing option Greeks, you can still do trading. So you really don't have to know that. But option Greeks is something which is going to help you understand what exactly is happening. So if an option price increases from 50 rupees to 80 rupees, why exactly has the price increased? That you are going to understand with help of option Greeks. So that is what we are going to see in this video. This is a basic fundamental video. We are also going to come with different parts to this Greeks. So hope you guys like it. And if you are liking the content on this channel, please do hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you so much guys. Hi, welcome to this video on Option Greeks. So before we actually start off with Option Greeks, it is really important for us to understand how an option contract works. So the fundamentals of option contract working. So did you know that option contracts are exactly similar to insurance contracts? So first we will understand how actually it is similar. So all of us here will be aware of either health insurance, life insurance or at least an auto insurance. So let's see how a basic insurance contract works. So let's assume uh, this is me and I go to buy a insurance for my car. So this is my car. I know the drawing is really bad and this is the insurance company. So any insurance contract usually comes with three main parts to it. So we are going to understand what are these three main parts and then we are going to see how is option extremely similar to insurance. So here I want to make sure that if something happens to my car, then the insurance company will compensate the amount. So what does the insurance company expects me to do? So initially I will have to end up paying them a premium. So let's say I pay them rupees 5000. So the initial premium has to be paid by the buyer. So this is the first part. What is the second part? Second part is if something happens to my car within a particular period of time, say one year or six months, if something happens to my car within a particular period of time, then insurance company is going to give me some compensation. So this is the second part. So compensation will be given in case of a damage within a particular period of time. So that is the second most important part of an insurance contract. And third one, this is why all the insurance companies make money. That is, if nothing happens to my car within a period of an year, then this insurance company gets to keep my entire 5,000 rupees. So the third part of this is if no damage is occurred, then the initial premium which is paid is not refunded back to the insurance buyer. So how does this actually look like? Doesn't it actually look like an option contract? We will exactly see how that is. So we will take an option buyer as well as option seller. So since a uh, family man is in trend now, so we will assume the option buyer to be Shrikant and we will assume the option seller to be JK. So we are using this example because family man is trending right now. And uh, what do we observe here? So let's say Shrikant is the buyer of Nifty 16,000 call option. So initially, Shrikant will end up paying some premium to JK. So JK is the seller of the option, similar to the insurance seller. And Shrikant is the buyer of the option, similar to insurance buyer. So he will end up paying certain amount of premium, let's say around 50 rupees to JK. So now JK, in case if the market goes above 16,000, 
then JK has to compensate Srikant. And that too, it should occur within a particular period of time, which means that is the expiry date. So if 24 June is the expiry, so if Nifty does not go above 16,000 rupees uh, in a particular period of time, that is before the expiry day, the initial premium which Srikant paid to JK, JK himself can keep it. He does not have to give it back to Srikant. So this is how the entire insurance contract and option contract works. So you see that the even the option contract fulfills all the three main clauses or three main parts of an insurance contract. So that is payment of the initial premium, compensation if something occurs within a particular period of time, that is Nifty going above 16,000 within the expiry day. And if it does not occur within a particular period of time, then the option seller or the insurance company gets to keep the entire premium. So this is how an option is similar to insurance. There is one other concept which you have to understand before we actually go into Greeks and that is pricing of an option. So for example, uh, let me take a simple example. So let's say there are two people and one is aged 25 years and one more is aged 65 years. So now let's say you want to go and buy health insurance for both of them. Who will end up paying higher premium? Will the 65 year old pay higher premium or the 25 year old pay higher premium? So here the 65 year old will end up paying higher premium. That is because the probability of 65 year old falling sick is much higher than probability of a 25 year old falling sick or having some surgery or maybe say having some issue health issue. So the probability of a 65 year old is more than probability of a 25 year old. So that reason being the health insurance for 65 year old will be much expensive than health insurance for 25 year old. So end of the day, everything just comes down to probability. So even when we talk about option contracts, when you see an option trading at 100 rupees and when you see one other far out of money option trading at 30 rupees, it is because the probability of this particular option, option X, becoming in the money is much higher than probability of this particular option Y becoming in the money. So it is only the game of probability. So the probability of this becoming in the money is uh, much higher than probability of this becoming in the money. And hence, for that reason, the premium for this will be higher than premium for this. So entire option Greeks revolves around this particular concept of probability. So now we are going to actually see what are the different Greeks and what the Greeks are actually going to tell us. So what are option Greeks going to tell us actually? Option Greeks are just going to tell us why is this option priced at 100 whereas why is this option priced at 30. The first Greek what we are going to learn is called as Delta. So let's take example of Srikant and JK itself. So this is uh, Srikant. So let's assume Nifty is trading at 15,700 and JK and Srikant enter into a 16,000 contract. So 16,000 call option and we will assume the expiry is in 7 days. So now JK will calculate Okay, what is the probability that Nifty will actually go above 16,000 because from 15,700, if it actually goes to 16,000, then JK will have to compensate Srikant. So how much he has to compensate? Every rupee above 16,000, he has to compensate. So now JK will calculate, okay, what is the probability it will go above 16,000? Let's say he arrives at a probability of 15%. So by next week, there is only a 15% chance that Nifty will actually go above 16,000 from 15,700. Okay, so now JK will tell, okay, there is uh, 7 days to expiry and probability is only 15%. Okay, Srikant, you pay me an initial premium of around 30 rupees. So now, what happens tomorrow? Tomorrow, let's say Nifty ends up going to 15,800. So from 15,700, Nifty ends up going to 15,800 and now there is 6 days left to expiry because one day is already over. So Nifty is at 15,800 and there is 6 days left to expiry. Now Srikanth will come to JK and tell, I want to buy one more call option from you of 16,000. 
So now JK will calculate. Okay, before Nifty had to go from 15,700 to 16,000, which is 300 points in seven days. And the probability was 15%. Now Nifty has to go only 200 points in six days. And which means the probability is around 25%. JK calculated the probability. He found that the probability has increased because Nifty has actually moved from 15,700 to 15,800 and now it has to only go 200 points in 6 days before it had to go 300 points in 7 days for him to compensate but now it's only 200 points in 6 days. So now JK will tell okay you want to buy a contract today this is no longer available at 30 today you have to pay me 50 rupees if I have to give you the same contract. So if you want a compensation above 16,000, you have to pay me 50 rupees. So I hope this is clear and I also hope how it is actually working. So now since the probability has increased, if Srikant and JK want to enter a new contract, JK will obviously demand more because the chances of it ending in the money has increased. So now I'm just going to clear everything and I'm going to explain the concept of Delta. So what initially happened initially both of them entered into a contract at 30 rupees when nifty was at 15700 next what happened when nifty went to 15800 jk asked shrikant to pay 50 rupees which means when nifty increased 100 points the premium actually increased 20 points so what does this mean for every one point increase in nifty the premium increases by 0.2 point so here you can see that for a hundred point increase in nifty the option price has gone up 20 rupees so what does this mean for every point in nifty how much will an option price move it moves 20 divided by 100 so which means the delta is going to be 0.2 and delta is going to tell for every point move in nifty what if tomorrow it goes to 15805 the option price is going to increase from 50 to 50 plus 5 into 0.2 why 5 into 0.2 from 800 it has gone to 805 which means it has increased 5 points and the delta is 0.2 which is going to be 51 rupees so if nifty goes to 15805 5 rupees higher then the delta of the option is 0.2 and that's the reason the option is going to increase from 50 to 51 rupees. So this is the basic concept of delta and as I told you everything revolves around probability and I hope this concept of delta is clear. So what is delta telling us? Delta is telling for one point increase in the underlying, for one point increase in nifty, how much is the option going to move? Right, uh, so here you can see I have opened Sensible, I have added 16,000 June 24th calls and it is showing me a delta of 0.12. So what does this mean? If Nifty is going up by 100 points, then the option premium is going to go up from 19 rupees. It's currently at 19 rupees. So it is going to become somewhere around 19 plus 12, which is 31 rupees. So this is the concept of delta and I hope it's clear. So next we move on to the concept of theta. So what does theta mean? Theta is nothing but the time value. So now we will again go back to example of Srikanth and JK. So you can see here I have added uh, some more things on the board. So let's assume that these two enter a contract of 16,000 call option expiring on June 24th. Day 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And let's assume Nifty is currently trading at 15,700. So now JK will calculate. Okay, what is the probability of Nifty going from 15,700 to 16,000 in 5 days? So there is only 5 days. So let's say he comes up with a number of 15% and he is going to tell, okay, uh, Shrikant, there is a 15% chance of this particular event happening. So you pay me a premium of 30 rupees today. So now basically JK calculated what is the probability and he asked Srikant to pay 30 rupees to enter the 16,000 call option. Now let's say one more day passes by and Nifty goes to 15,750. 
So now Srikanth actually calculates. Okay, Nifty has gone from 15,700 to 15,750. Which means now there is only 4 days left to expiry and Nifty has to go 250 points. Before there was 5 days left to expiry and there was a 15% chance and Nifty had to go 300 points. Now there is 4 days left to expiry and Nifty still has to go 250 points. So is it possible? Now JK will calculate and he will be like, okay, the probability has decreased to 13%. So uh, JK will tell Srikanth, if you want to enter another new contract today, you just pay me around 27 rupees because the probability has fallen from 15% to 13%. So let's say day 3, Nifty actually ends completely flat and it is at 15,750 only. So Nifty is completely flat. So now JK calculates. Now there is only 3 days left to expiry and in 2 days Nifty has just moved 50 points. So what is the probability it can actually end up going another 250 points in 3 days? Let's say the probability drops to 8%. So now JK will be like, okay, Srikanth, if you want to enter a contract on day 3, like that is only 3 days left to expiry, then you just pay me 14 rupees because there is significant reduction in the probability. So that way, let's say it goes to 15,000. 775 on day 4. So now again JK will calculate and he tells okay now the probability of it going around 225 points in 2 days is really high. So which means the probability is around 5%. And he tells okay now you just pay me 5 rupees. And finally on expiry day if it actually doesn't go to 16,000 then the option contract will end at 0. So if you have to enter a new contract, you can see that as the probability decreased, even though the market has moved up, so the market moved from 15,700 to 15,775, even in spite of that, the option ended at zero. So this is why most of the option buyers lose money because of theta. And this is why even most of the option sellers make money, that is because of theta. If option prices doesn't move anywhere, then obviously the option premium slowly erodes away. So now you might have a question, why does the option premium erode? So that's because of probability. I hope uh, it is clear why exactly your option premium is going to come down. And what does theta tell? What is the time value you would lose? So time value you will either lose if there is a move in the market or if there is no move in the market, you will definitely lose some time value. So what is the time value you are going to lose? So now if we come to sensible, you see that the theta is 4.3. 4.3 is the theta, which means overnight this position is going to reduce by an amount of 4.3 from 19 rupees. Tomorrow, by end of tomorrow, this option is going to be 19 minus 4.5, which means tomorrow if the market does not move anywhere, the option automatically drops, the price of the option automatically drops to somewhere close to 14.5 rupees. So I hope this example is clear on how exactly or why exactly the option premium decreases and how exactly the theta works. So now we are going to move on to the third degree and that is called as Vega. So Vega basically measures what is the change in the premium if the volatility in the market increases. So we are going to take same example again example of Srikanth and JK. Again, we are going to take 16,000 call option, right? And we will assume it to be expiring on 24th June. So let's assume on 18th of June, market is very flat. So it is not moving at all. It is extremely flat and it is not very volatile. So let's say this is the 18th of June day and market is just flat hovering around and it is not moving anywhere. So what perception will JK get? JK will be like, okay, uh, market is not moving anywhere. It's completely flat. It is not very volatile. Okay, uh, Shrikant, the chance of option ending in the money is very low because market is not moving pretty much. So let's assume Nifty is at uh, 15,700. So JK will be like, okay, I estimate the probability to be somewhere around uh, 15%. So you just pay me around 30 rupees premium. So how did he arrive at this 30 rupees? And uh, one more thing, what you have to know here is 
I am assuming so while I am explaining vega while I am explaining vega I am assuming theta and delta to be neutral so there is no effect of theta and uh, delta so when I am explaining theta I am assuming there is no effect of vega and delta so don't get confused so here we are assuming that there is no effect of delta and theta so just to understand vega and then we will come back to that so he will ask okay the market is not very volatile and the chances of this option ending in the money is pretty low so maybe around 15 percent so just pay me 30 rupees so on uh, 19th and 20th is holiday so on 21st let's say the market becomes very choppy like extremely choppy so now uh, JK will be like okay Shrikant the market is extremely choppy and the option can become in the money anytime market can go above 16,000 anytime because market is very volatile so you can see that market went up 50 points came down 50 points went up 100 points so it is extremely volatile and if you want to enter a 16,000 contract today so you will obviously have to pay me more because my risk is higher the probability of this ending in the money is higher which means my risk is higher so you pay me more so if the vega or iv increases so vega won't increase vega is just a measure so if the iv increases then jk is going to tell the very next day now if you want to enter a new contract pay me 50 rupees and uh, to explain uh, vega so vega is basically the measure of change in points for one iv increase so let's say uh, the iv of nifty increases from 15 to 17 and the option premium increases from 10 to 12. So then what is the vega? When IV is increasing 2 points, the option premium is going up by 2 points, which means vega of the option is 1. So for every 1 point increase in IV, the option price also goes up by 1 point. So this is called as vega. It measures the volatility. So we have now learned three Greeks and we finally move on to the fourth and the most important one which is called as Gamma. So before which we are going to look at Sensible. So you can see here the Vega is 3.9. So what does this 3.9 indicate which means for one point increase in IV. So if IV of the option currently increases from 13.1 so you can see that is the exact IV of the option. If it increases to 14.1, then this option premium increases from 19 to 21.9. So for one point increase in volatility, the option price increases by almost 3.9 points. So that is the measure of Vega. And finally, we come to the fourth Greek and the most important one that is Gamma. So gamma is the second derivative of delta. So this just measures the rate of change in delta. I'm just going to keep this simple. So let's say there is a 15,800 call option and then there is a 16,200 call option. So Nifty, let's assume Nifty is currently at 15,700. So we'll assume the premiums to be 70 rupees as well as 5 rupees. So now let's say Nifty goes from 15,700 to 15,800. Uh, 15,800 option increases from 70 to let's say 100. And 16,200 option let's assume increases from 5 rupees to 6 rupees. So this is on day 1. So 70 rupees option has become 100. 5 rupee option has become 6 rupees because it is out of money. So this is day 1. On day 2, let's assume Nifty moves from 15,800 to 15,900. So that time what is going to happen? This 100, let's assume it is going to become 150. Whereas this 6 rupees is now going to become somewhere around 9 rupees. So you can see that for the first 100 points, this option increased from 70 to 100 and then from 100 to 150. Whereas this option, for example, increased from 5 to 6 and 6 to 9. So now we are going to measure the delta for the same. So this is A, let's assume A and B. So A, that is 15,800 C, 
during the first 100 point move the delta was 0.3 because the underlying moved 100 points and the option premium moved 30 points so 30 divided by 100 is 0.3 after that on day 2 the underlying moved another 100 points right whereas the option moved from 50 to 150 which means what has happened the delta has increased from 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 so the delta has changed and the maximum it can go is till 1. So the delta always ranges from 0 to 1. So 1 means for every 1 point move the option increases by 1 rupee. So that is deep in the money options always have delta very close to 1. Far out of money options always have delta very close to 0. So now we will take B that is 16,200. So for the first 100 point move the delta is just 0 0.01. You can see that the delta has increased from 0 0.01 to 0 0.03. Why? So for the first 100 points move, the option just moved 1 rupee. Whereas for the next 100 point move, the option moved 3 rupees. Right? So here you can see that the delta has increased 3x. Whereas here the delta has just increased somewhere around 1.7x. So you can see the difference here, right? So the delta has increased 3x, whereas the delta has increased 1.7x. And what happens is as the option starts to become in the money, the rate of change of delta, so this is the rate of change of delta and this is nothing but gamma. The rate of change of delta for out of money option starts to become extremely high. And that's the reason on expiry day, you find two rupees option going to 200 rupees. Why? Because next, let's say it starts moving, the delta changes to 0.1. Then the delta changes to 0.3. So you can see that there is a 30 times increase for every one point move. So you can see that the rate of change in delta is increasing. And this adds the compounding effect to the option price increase. So I have opened Sensible here and you can see gamma. Gamma is 0 0.0008. So it just means that for every one point move in Nifty, right for one point move in nifty my delta is going to increase from 0.12 plus 0 0.0008 so my delta is going to increase by this so for the second point move this into 2 if nifty moves by 20 points this into 20 so this is how delta is measured sorry uh, this is how gamma is measured and it basically tells you the rate of change of delta now we will take a real life example and try to understand what exactly will happen. So the delta is 0.12, theta is 4.3 and uh, vega is 4. So we will just work with an assumption that there is no increase or decrease in the market volatility. So we are going to take actual example. So 16,000 call option expiring on June 24th, trading at 19 rupees right now 19.5 rupees right now the delta is 0.12 and theta is so around 4.3 we'll just keep it as 4.5 so nifty is very close to 15700 so we'll just keep it as it is so now let's say nifty tomorrow goes to 15750 so what will happen to your call option we are going to see. So we will take Vega or IV to be same. So there is no change at all. So basically Vega is a measure that if there is one point increase in IV, what will be the change in the option price. And we will also assume there is no effect of gamma because if we take effect of gamma, then calculation becomes complicated because for every point, we have to first increase the delta and then we have to calculate for the next point. Right? So let's say it moves from 15,700 to 15,750. So what is going to happen? 50 point increase in my option. The delta is 0 0.12 which is going to give me 19.5 plus 6 rupees. So option is going to become 25.5 rupees. But then we have effect of theta. So the theta is 4.5 which means 25.5 minus 
five. So tomorrow, if Nifty is going to move up by fifty points, then my option is only going to increase from nineteen point five to twenty one rupees. So that is only one point five points. So now let's assume second case. So I hope this is clear. What we have done: fifty point increase into point one two, and that is going to give us six rupees. Which means by delta our option is going to become twenty five point five minus theta, which is four point five. So case number two, we are going to assume Nifty is flat fifteen thousand seven hundred. So this is case one, case two. So this what is going to happen? There is absolutely no move in market, which means zero into point one two, which is equal to zero. Then we have negative four point five. Plus the current premium, nineteen point five. So this is going to give us a value of fifteen rupees. So which means tomorrow, if market moves nowhere, so if there is no increase or decrease in the market and it ends exactly at fifteen seven hundred, then value of my option will decrease from nineteen point five rupees to fifteen rupees. So because there is no effect of delta and there is actually. Uh, only effect of theta. So next, we are going to come to the third example where the market actually uh, comes down to fifteen thousand six hundred. So now, what is going to happen? There's a hundred point decrease, which means hundred into point one two, which is minus twelve rupees. So minus hundred into point one two because market has dipped hundred points. Minus hundred into point one two, minus four point five, which is effect of theta, and finally we have. The current premium nineteen point five, which means if there is a hundred point decrease in the market, then the option prices is expected to be somewhere around three rupees. So this is how we can arrive or we can know what is the expected option premium price or why exactly option premiums are behaving the way they are. So this is just a basic video where I haven't considered the effect of gamma or vega. So I'm just Telling you the effect of delta as well as theta, and this theta is always negative. No matter what, it is always negative. For a put option or a call option, it doesn't matter whether the market is up or down. It doesn't matter. It is always going to be negative because when the number of days decreases, the probability decreases, and that's the reason the seller always has an advantage over the buyer. So you can see here in case number one, the option with uh, market moved fifty points higher. Let me just clear everything. So, in case number one, we saw if market moved fifty points higher, the option premium became twenty one. In case number two, where the market didn't move anywhere, the option premium of out of money option became somewhere around fourteen. And case number three, it became almost three rupees. And you are selling or buying the option at nineteen point five rupees. So now you can clearly see why an option. Seller always has advantage in the longer run. If the market does not move anywhere, he is still going to benefit. If the market moves up, he is going to lose little small amount of points. And if the market moves down, he is going to gain huge. So this is the first introductory and the most basic video on option Greeks. And I hope you have liked it. We have covered all the Greeks. There is one more Greek called rho, but uh, that is basically the measure of interest rate. Uh, since the interest rate hardly changes, it is not very important as important as these four. So these four are the main uh, Greeks of options. So the fifth one is not that important. So we are definitely going to cover in the next video of option Greeks, which is little more advanced. So this is a very basic video of option Greeks. So I hope you have liked it. So what did we learn today? So we learned how insurance and options are similar. The second one, what we learned is how everything is dependent on probability. Third one, we learned about different Greek. I hope you guys have liked this particular video. Thank you so much for joining, and hope to see you soon.